Thank you, Yoka. A very good afternoon to you all participants. Laurent Schmidt, in his presentation, said that uh, the electricity market is going towards real time. And I think Marcus excellently complimented it. You spoke about the technology and the services, and you said in the end that the missing bit, the missing piece is that has to be in order is the market design. And the, my presentation is to shed some light on how to go about developing the real-time market. But let's have a few questions in the beginning. How many of you uh, has electric heating at home, which is also participating in demand response? Hands up, please. There's one. I can see some hands. How about how about the companies that you represent? Are they participating in the demand side response? How many hands are being put up? Some more hands. Looks a bit better. And the last question. How many of you have an electric car or how many are considering getting one? Well, this seems to be more popular. And uh, I, it is my guess that when we organize the, this kind of a seminar in five or ten years' time, there will be much more hands up in all of these questions because we're going towards distributed resources, uh, flexible resources that can take many different forms. In my presentation, um, I'm going to also give some background to how the energy disruption is challenging the power system and how it increases the need for balancing we need flexibility, and flexibility will be completely different from what we are used to. And as many speakers today have already said, the challenge will be how we can harness all that flexibility so that we can use it to balance the market and the system. And one more challenge to you all. During the afternoon, we have been hearing the presentations and are going to speak about the vision now. Please consider from your own point of view whether you are uh, suppliers or grid uh, or DSOs or users of electricity or technology suppliers or private consumers. How could you contribute to uh, all this? How could the market and the structures and conditions be developed so that we can make it possible to, uh, for the power system to become clean and cost efficient so that we can maintain an efficient market? So this is what we have been seeing in recent years. The energy disruption is clearly seen in the production structure in the power system. Our traditional fossils-based uh, combined heat and power production facilities are disappearing from the market. We only have one half of traditional coal-based CHP uh, plant in use, and the uh, one half of it is in the uh, reserve side. What we have seen grow is uh, intermittent production, especially wind power, and obviously we're going to get more nuclear power next year. This is the development that we have been seeing, and it will continue. As we consider how the intermittent generation is 
seen is how it's impacting the Finnish power system. You can see, you can look at this picture get, to get some idea of it. For example, last year, uh, if we look at the total consumption and the share of wind power of it, it was less than 6%. But if we consider uh, the momentary fluctuations and their extent, we can safely say that wind power and the intermittent production are clearly being felt in the power system. And the uh, top production levels in wind of wind power in January this year was higher than the, is the capacity of the upcoming Olkiluoto nuclear power station. What follows from this is that the production that can be regulated will decrease or disappear and we will have more nuclear power but also intermittent production and this means that we need have a greater need for balancing um, what is the need for balancing all about we can think about it through the following example as the focus of uh, the trading is still in day, the day ahead market we, after that we have the intraday market and the balancing market as transactions are made in the day ahead market and the larger the share of intermittent production, the bigger it will be the uncertainty between the closer of the day ahead market to the uh, hour of supply. This means that trading in the intraday market and in the balancing market will increase. And the two terawatt hours that has been written in that uh, circle is the sum of the volumes of these two markets at the moment. What the volumes will be soon remains a question mark. At the moment we are making a study of what the need for balancing will be, but it is obvious that it will increase from the present. Looking at our European neighboring countries and even further away, uh, the need for balancing is clearly larger if we think about Denmark, where about 45% of electricity consumption was covered by wind power last year or for example Germany where a third of the production was covered by uh, solar and wind power this they have progressed much further and add to that the fact that the bidding areas do not uh, follow the congestions they are based on national borders so the need for uh, balancing increases. We need new. We need more flexibility. At the same time, we are facing a new challenge. The resources that can provide flexibility, they will be completely different from what we are used to. So far, and in the past, our flexible resources were those well-known power plants. We had CHP hydro power plants and hydropower continues to be important here, but alongside them there will be distributed dis resources. We will have the uh, uh, The boilers in households, we will have electric vehicles, the different uh, power storages at homes co that are connected to solar panels. Other um, consumers such as industrial facilities, other 
uh, users of electricity, they will offer their flexibility. It will be distributed both geographically and in terms of ownership. And these different flexible resources will be uh, different in uh, terms of their characteristics. If we consider their uh, the time of their activation, um, the time of availability, uh, all of these things will be different in these new distributed resources, apart from the fact that they are geographically uh, distributed. And about the change in the production structure, in the future, we will have a twofold structure. First of all, we have the small scale distributed production, then we have the, the few large uh, producers and um, the, the mid-sized resources are disappearing. And as the need for balancing is increasing, and as it will be more challenging uh, with the distributed resources, the question is who will be responsible for balancing the production because the power system must be in balance at all times. We have here two extremes that we can use. We can go to the direction of uh, having, as, as we have such a challenging system, a difficult system, we will have to rely on the TSO to take care of it, which would bring it towards a centralized system. This kind of a system is being used in the United States, in Australia, and in some European countries. In practice, it means that the, sis, uh, the system or the TSO uh, will decide who produces, when produces, uh, how much produces, and who consumes, who uses, how much, and what constraints there will be for uh, consumption. The other way to go is to go towards a decentralized system where market operators, market uh, actors get a bigger role. These options, these alternatives are not on-off. In, in between there will be different options to uh, do things, there will be capacity auctions, strategic reserves, etc., etc. But these are the basic alternatives. In FinGrid, we think that the market actors must have a bigger role in balancing. We want to go towards the decentralized system and we want to have the TSO as the last resort. But as much as the market actors, market operators can uh, do for balancing, we think that's the best solution. Well, what kinds of concrete things uh, can uh, increase the participation of market actors and enhance their roles. Well, there are different thing, different ways to do this. They have to do with what kinds of marketplaces we have, how the different resources can be offered, how they can be traded, um, what the trading times are in the different marketplaces in the Nordics and in the Baltics. Uh, the, the intraday market opens the earliest in Europe, and at the moment, Finland and Estonia, and our the border between us is the location where you can trade in the intraday market for the longest. So the different solutions in markets, market design can be used to facilitate and help market operators to take care of the balancing on market terms. And this graph illustrates that, uh, that 
as the in, the whole need increases, the share of market actors also increases, and the TSO will be the final resort, but it will be needed. So market actors will balance. But what we need are uh, all the flexible resources. During the afternoon, we have discussed the different uh, marketplaces for the reserves that are being planned and will be built in due course. We are going to have the European marketplaces, the Mari and the Picasso in about three years' time. Trading in them will take place in certain standard products. There must be a certain activation period. There may be, uh, there must be certain minimum sizes of uh, bids uh, that are required for participation in these markets. But also, we are going to uh, start building the Nordic marketplaces. Uh, according to uh, the solution or the decision concerning the Nordic balancing uh, model. And they will offer good po uh, possibilities for market actors to participate and offer their flexible resources. But perhaps we could look for an analogy uh, somewhere. Uh, Matti, I don't know if uh, if the cucumber directive still exists in the EU. It requires that cucumbers have a certain form. They must not be too curved. They must be rather straight to uh, qualify for a uh, category one cucumber. We can think about the flexible resources in the same way so that if certain uh, European and regional uh, marketplaces require certain min have certain minimum requirements for participants and products, uh, it may mean that a large share of the flexible capacity may remain unused. In this case, we need new kinds of solutions to complement the system. And the idea that we have been considering is whether or not it would be good to establish a multilateral flexibility market, a platform that could operate on a national at a national level in the beginning. It will not uh, sideline the aggregators who have had uh, an important role in uh, collecting the flexibility from the different small resources uh, to be offered into the market, but a solution in which very different flexibility resources could be packaged according to the needs of the buyer. For example, if we need a certain amount of upregulation, we could combine certain uh, purchase bids, for example, uh, from electric heating in households and combine that with upregulation from uh, power storages so that if they alone cannot be on for a sufficiently long time, but if they are packaged together, we will get a flexible resource that fulfills a certain need. Uh, such pilots have been started uh, in different parts of the world already, and as the need for flexibility is increasing further, it would certainly be useful to start considering such alternatives. The, the entity that we are considering at the moment First of all, we have had to implement the network codes and the related marketplaces, the European marketplaces that are being built. But we need to start looking further into the future towards uh, 2025, 2030, and to consider what this development means, the development in which the need for balancing increases and the distributed resources 
will increase in number and the need to get all the flexibility resources uh, in use, into use in the system will increase. Uh, what this entails and, and in, involves has to do with the fact, first of all, that we have market actors, whether they be actively participating in the market or passively through a service provider or an ag aggregator, their number will increase significantly and the roles will change. So far, we've had just a few roles, uh, producer uh, and user, but these roles are uh, have melted together so it's difficult to say who is what. And to get sufficient signals for, the, uh, for investing in these resources, in these flexible resources, we need a market providing sufficient price signals so that uh, there are incentives to both uh, offer uh, the flexibility and or, and purchase the flexibility when needed. And this means that we need uh, an increasing amount of uh, solutions for exchanging information. We need real-time information, real-time data about the resources available, uh, offered. So this is a whole that we need to consider in the future. And of course, TSO will be the last resort there so that we can maintain the power balance at all times. But the construction work, the building of the future market model is something that no one can do alone. We all have to do that together and we get to do that together. It is being done at the European level at the moment. I believe many of you have participated in European consultations and there will be more of those coming up. The next big effort will have to do with developing uh, the Nordic uh, balancing system and uh, the related marketplaces, the views and participation of all of you will be crucial so that we can establish a system that is functional and good for all. But as we move at the European level and even at the Nordic level, there are quite a few of us. So perhaps we should consider things first uh, on a domestic arena. And therefore, we have also considered, we in FinGrid have considered that in order to be able to produce enough ideas for the market model 2030, we should start the discussion in Finland uh, together on a domestic arena to start thinking what could be our contributions to this discussion, what kinds, kinds of solutions we need to be able to uh, bring the power system disruption forward. So you will be hearing more about this during this year. We will get back to this and continue this dialogue. Thank you.